Hello everybody, welcome to My Sweet Home Living today. My name is Tracy King. Well, come on in. We're gonna do a little bit of primitive fall crafting today. And actually this is a part two of a little mini series that we started last Friday. We're finishing it up today. So I'm gonna show you what we created on Friday, what we created yesterday, and how you can use all of these elements together to create a beautiful little mini vignette for your fall home decor. So hop on in here and let me know you're here by leaving a little note below. That always helps me uh, be able to see you guys down there and give me a shout out and let me know where you're tuning in from today. Hello, Miss Sherry, how are you? Hello, Miss Pam and Debbie. I'm a little bit farther away from my phone today. So if you see me squinting, I'll try not to make it <laughs> super obvious, but I may have a little trouble seeing your comments today, but I'll always go back after and catch them after the live. Hello from Ohio, Miss Beverly. Hop on in here, you guys. I am so excited about today. Um, this has been a, kind of a week in the planning. Last Friday, we created a beautiful little fall pumpkin um, out of just some basic muslin material fabric. If you're not familiar with that, it's just a basic natural uh, fiber material. It's just really plain and simple. You can catch it on sale a lot of times at your local craft supply store but it's so versatile and so user friendly um, you can really use it for lots of things and i've been on a muslin fabric kick lately so you all hop on in here i'm going to kind of show you what we're doing today how are you I've, oh thank you thank you miss Deja. hey miss pat it's crow day you're right it's crow i wore my black <laughs> for crow day and uh, i wanted to show you what we created yesterday in case you missed it you might want to go back we had some video interruptions but the project turned out amazing. Uh, finished it sort of after we signed off, but I wanted to show you what it looked like because we're gonna use it at the end of today's episode. We're gonna tie it all together in a beautiful little vignette. So I can't wait to show you. Hey, Miss Gretchen, how are you? Thanks for hopping on. So this is what we created yesterday. I don't even think I flipped my camera around you guys. Shame on me, shame on me. There we go. <laughs> um, but then something funky happened with our light. Okay, there we go. Are we back? I don't know. There we go. <laughs> We're all good now. Hi, Miss Cheryl. Uh, so this is the little primitive feed sack that we made yesterday using our home printer. Yes, if you missed it, you missed a great episode. Go back and catch it on my page. DIY fall primitive feed sack. These turned out adorable, you guys packed it full with some little dried beans at the bottom, put a little stuffing in the top, kind of put it, put, push it down in the center there. It looks like an authentic little pumpkin seed feed sack there. Isn't that cute? Hey, Miss Sharon, Deborah Newby, welcome. So excited to have you here. Let me know if you're new or if you're a loyal follower. I wanna hear from you guys too. I know that you're here. <laughs> Show up down there and that lets me know you're here. Hey, Miss Joey. Uh, thank you, Miss Beth. So I'm, I was like head over heels after we finished this yesterday and I'm gonna tie it in with a perfect little vignette this afternoon, all tied together after we finish our crow. So if you've missed last Friday's uh, part one of this little series, um, this is what we created little uh, primitive little pumpkin sitter okay now it could stand alone all on its own super cute um but we have to finish it off with a little crow today so that's what we're doing today and i uh, can't wait to show you how i'm going to use all of these little items together so the little uh, um this is all together a little printable set a design set from a designer on Etsy. Uh, of course, you could probably draw your own if you want, or you can make it really simple. It's super inexpensive and you can support small business at the same time. But I purchased it, it's from Craft Junction, and I will share the, uh, the link, the info, where you can find it as well. If you were on my live last Friday and you requested information for that, I did go back and respond back to you and gave you the link to where you can find that. So go back and check those comments if you missed it. But it all, you can print it off all on your home printer you cut out the little pattern pieces then you just transfer your pattern over to some muslin material then you know 
do all the jazz to jazz it up so I showed you how to do the pumpkin last week so we used the printable pattern and created this cute little pumpkin uh, little sitter and then so today we're doing part two we're doing the crow now the crow is going to tie together and he's going to be placed on the front of this pumpkin with some cute little uh, coffee grunged cheesecloth on the front and then we're going to tie it all together so you'll come on in here i'm going to show you how to put it together show you my grunging techniques and this is all no sewing involved so if you're a little intimidated by sewing don't worry stick around i'm going to show you the easy peasy way to whip it together so hang with me today we've got about 40 minutes to create today's project you might also be catching me in the craft on the clock group and if so welcome would love it if you make sure that you become a new follower friend of my sweet home living if you're here today if you're new you can tap the screen in the top three dots that pop up in the top right corner of your screen you can click follow and turn on your notifications i come live about once sometimes twice a week just depends but a lot of times you'll see me working behind the scenes over in the craft from the clock group if you don't know about craft from the clock let me know that and i'll give you info for that as well <laughs> uh let's see watched oh good miss tabitha how are you no so crafts they're awesome aren't they cindy from the crafty farmers or misty sorry um we have a uh, just a scrap piece of muslin material here you guys so when i printed this off i cut it out all you do is just take this and transfer it to your muslin um fabric okay now super easy if you have one of those invisible uh, if you're into like if you're a seamstress you love quilting or any kind of fabric type projects you probably have one of those little invisible ink <laughs> drawing tools <laughs> guess what I'm getting <laughs> today <laughs> I'm gonna order me one of those I've heard that the mark be gone uh, variety is uh, well uh, well reviewed so I'm gonna check that one out because I've really gotten heavy into these fabric projects and I love using those uh, the fabric but it's a little challenging sometimes so I think that would come in handy so I'm gonna check that out all right so you're gonna transfer it to your material cut it out you're gonna need two pieces for your crow a front and a back okay so I have already done that part because you guys don't want to see me trace and cutting all morning so I have traced it out I have done one piece here and I'm going to show you what I do to kind of get the coloring and the grunging uh, effect on this little crow today okay all right so in a little bowl paper plate a cup whatever I have mixed just a little bit of black acrylic paint with some water just diluted it down okay hey miss nancy hey from louisiana thank you miss linda for showing up all right so all i've done is put that in a little bowl okay black diluted acrylic paint with some water all right uh, it's going to be very watery and it's going to soak into this muslin beautifully this muslin material just soaks it up like a sponge okay so you're going to go and just cover it up and it's going to look a little bit like a stain and it may take a second to sort of um, it seems like there's a little bit of a I don't want to say it's waterproofing but there's a little bit of a, um, a protectant layer or something on this muslin where it doesn't want to soak in right away just give it literally like three or four seconds and it soaks right in now I do like to take my brush motions all in the same direction just so that if my brush lines do become a little bit visible it's all a little bit more uniform okay um, not any crazy zigzag lines now I am okay if it doesn't completely cover okay so let me show you what I mean so see right here I see a little bit of uh, it looks like distressing it looks like a little bit of scratches on that okay now your material is going to want to curl a little bit once it gets damp okay um, okay I'm missing um, okay I'm not sure if I'm missing some, some comments they're rolling really fast today so then all you're gonna do is take it and give it a dry now you can put this on a cookie sheet uh, put it in your oven on very low like 200 250 just for a little bit until it dries you can flip it periodically as it's drying do not leave it unintended unattended um, anyway because you know it's fabric I mean if it over dries it can burn <laughs> I don't want anybody anybody doing that so just keep uh, keep watch on it won't take a real long time to dry okay or you can use a heat tool hang it on a little a little uh, string and let it air dry whatever works for you okay now once you do that and it's dry 
Okay, we're gonna pretend that this is dry. Then, our coffee grains mixture. Did you guys get the coffee granging recipe that we did last week? We mixed it together. I showed you the traditional coffee grains recipe. I mix it up, occasionally put it in like an old spaghetti sauce jar <laughs> that's been cleaned, of course. Store it in my refrigerator and then just pull it out whenever I'm ready to use it again. I pop it in the microwave, heat it up, and then it's ready to use. Now, it does get a little gunky, a little bit of settlement, you know, goes to the bottom, of course, once it settles, just give it a good shake and it's ready to go. Now, if you want to know this grunging recipe, I did bring it to my table today. <laughs> and after um, this evening, um, after I get finished with some other things today, I am going to post the recipe here on my page. So if you guys wanna save it, you can definitely do so, all right? So here it is, it is. Uh, a half a cup of instant coffee. Nothing fancy, I just used the generic brand, grocery store brand, with a hot cup of water. Then you're gonna use about a tablespoon, you can give or take a little bit of vanilla extract, and then cinnamon, I use about another tablespoon of cinnamon, you can add more if you'd like, just depends, okay? Whatever works better for you, you can kind of adjust those measurements, but that's the basics. And it smells amazing. <laughs> the addition of the vanilla with the coffee and the cinnamon, it creates a beautiful aroma that you can use on all of your fall projects or any projects for that matter, okay? So then all I do, where did I do that little brush? I just have a junky little chip brush that I use for this. I dip it in. I already smell it. It smells so good. And you will see it's, it's a little bit thick. It can kind of get a little goopy. That's okay. Uh, because actually it helps it kind of stick to your surface a little better. This is mostly used for fabric type projects. Um, and so a lot of times when I'm using paper style product, you know, projects, sometimes you can use this with success, but a lot of times I'll use a different method for that. All you're gonna do is give it a good coat. You can saturate it as heavily as you want. But what I would recommend if you want it super saturated and super scented, do it in layers, okay? Do uh, one layer, let it dry, and then come back with another layer. Okay, pretty simple, right? And I wish you could smell. <laughs> I wish there was an option that you could have smell on here because it smells amazing. It smells amazing. It's not overly strong. It just gives a nice, subtle smell. And it's perfect for fall, I think. So then, of course, you're going to let this dry as well. You could do the same drying method in the oven. Hang it to dry, air dry, use a heat tool, and kind of let the heat do its thing. All right? That's all there is to it. So you're going to do two of those. All right. I have already done two of those because I wanted to kind of speed this along today so we don't lose time and you guys get to see everything today. Hey, Miss Lori. Hey, Mara and Martha and Dee. Thank you all for hopping on. I appreciate you being here. Appreciate it so much. So here are my two. Now, do you see where I, I put this on a drying rack? Uh, this one. I put this one on a drying rack <laughs> and left my heat tool like blowing on it and I think it heated up the wires, the metal part of my drying rack and kind of left some marks. <laughs> so that's gonna be the back side of my curl because I don't want that to be seen, obviously. This one didn't do that. But you can kind of see there's a little bit of there's just discoloration, which is perfect. If you love rustic, you love vintage and primitive, you love that because it's character, right? Imperfections are a glorious thing when it comes to primitive style decorating. <laughs> so what I would suggest you can totally do, you can sew this if you are a seamstress, okay? If you're not a seamstress, you're like me, you like to do it the easy peasy way, I just like to use fabric glue, hot fabric glue. Sugarbinder has an amazing fabric glue stick that you can use. Get you a little glue gun that you use solely for your fabric glue sticks and keep that for your fabric projects if, if this is something that you like to do. I have ran out of my fabric glue sticks. Y'all have heard me say this for probably two weeks. I cannot for the life of me find my new bag that I ordered. And I, I don't know if I'm gonna have to order a new bag or what. So I'm using regular hot glue today. You can get away with it if you're making this for yourself, but if you wanna make these to resell, you'll definitely want to use fabric glue for durability, okay, and longevity. All right, so now if you want to, you could totally 
glue these right sides together and then turn it wrong side out, right side out. <laughs> I always get confused. You know what I mean. If you glued these together, then you turn it right side out and it would look like your seams are not visible. Like we did this yesterday on our little um, feed sack. So we glued the right sides together, then we turned it, turned it, we flipped it back out so you could see the pretty sides. <laughs> and you have that nice little seam that it looks like it was hand sewn, right? We did that with, with hot glue, you guys, hot glue. So um, you can do that, but with this being such a small little uh, project, I'm afraid that I would have to do a little bit too much tugging to, to turn it right side out, and I'm afraid it would pull apart my glue. So I'm going, I'm going to where we see the raw edges, and I'm totally okay with that because I love raw edges when it comes to decorating in this style, and it's totally forgiving. <laughs> So that's what we're going with today, but you can totally do you and do it your own way. Uh, so with my stuffing, I'm thinking I'm probably going to leave a little opening right here along the bottom side of his belly, and I'm going to leave that little section open so that we can stuff it with a little bit of filling. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, um, what you would use as fabric glue, and I'm going to go around the edges and I'm going to start sealing this little crow piece it, these little crow pieces together okay it's going to start coming to life you guys <laughs> uh i know mara how are you sweet friend if hot glue is amazing isn't it just an amazing thing what would we do without it <laughs> hi miss beverly how are you um uh thank you miss barb i appreciate you being here today we have lots of new followers in the last couple of weeks, and so I always love seeing uh, new names along with our friends that are already here from the beginning or somewhere along the way. I love seeing you guys in the comments down there. Um, I've just been hooked on these little uh, fabric crafts lately, and they're so easy. And I think everyone loved yesterday's little project where we made the little primitive feed sacks using a home printer <laughs> a home printer you guys to get a really nice finished project is that not adorable isn't that adorable we made that we printed this design onto a piece of material fabric using the home printer it was a cool thing cool cool thing and then i mean it makes it look like it was inked on there you, you know like you that was <laughs> an authentic little little sack, right? I think it looks so cute. And there's tons of little, uh, tons of options that you could take, you know, do that with. Um, oh, thank you, Miss Lori. Did you catch it yesterday? That's awesome. It was so much fun. So hopefully we've got lots of inspiration flowing out your way with all of these little projects. Okay. Now, I think I have my edges sealed. If not, I can always kind of go back in and touch it up, okay? Now, I do kind of like to rough it up because I like to see all of those little threads, those little fibers kind of coming unraveled because it looks tattered and worn. Love that. So I always like to take my fingernail and kind of just run it up and down the edges there and kind of loosen those up. It's just like your, your favorite pair of jeans. <laughs> cut them off to make shorts the ravels just make them perfect right um or the holes in the knees they the, the threads and the ravels that just gives them extra character well that's kind of how i feel about these as well um hey miss shelly and regine thank you all for hopping on i'm not seeing a ton of comments so i'm sure it's just the glitch that's going on lately i did update my app this morning before we started live today hoping that we would avoid any kind of problems but you just never know you just never know these days <laughs> so we're going to use a little bit of stuffing i'm not going to overly stuff this little crow guy okay because i want it kind of flat i want it to look like he's been around for a while um, and i don't want him to be too puffy and stick out of my uh, off of the front of our little pumpkin a whole lot where is that little uh, i had a little pin i'm going to use this to kind of stick my stuffing up in the little head and the little nose area maybe all right so we're just giving him a little fluff um 
Thank you, Miss Lisa. How are you? No worries. You're never late, sweet friend. I hope you're doing well. Um, Miss Lisa has a page of her own, and she does some beautiful projects as well. I love following what she's been doing. She's been doing some Christmas and July projects. And if you would like, you guys, make sure you can come in under your business page name. I, I always um, welcome that. I always love seeing you guys come in in the comments. Always welcome to do that here on my page. Um, hey, Miss Wendy, how are you? <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad. We've had some great feedback. And when you guys love something, it's always good to let, you know, let us know because otherwise we don't know <laughs> if you love it we'll keep bringing you more as long as you want to see it we'll keep bringing it okay now his little tail is going to be a little flat but that's okay this is cute we've given him just a little bit of shape a little bit of dimension i'm going to stuff just a tiny bit more right there and i think we'll be ready to close him up so let me show you kind of what he looks like thickness wise not much not much but just enough to kind of give him some shape he almost looks like a seahorse <laughs> but if you sit him like that you can tell he's a crow you can tell he's a crow <laughs> all right so let's just seal it up make sure i get enough glue and this the great thing about this material this fabric is that it's so thin thick well it's it's not too thick to work with but it, the fibers are really dense and close knit together that you can use this hot glue and it doesn't seep through the material okay so that's that's a, a really great thing if you want to do these in no sew uh, type projects now I squeezed out some hot glue from the edges and I don't want that to be seen so I'm just kind of pulling off those little glue strings okay so there's our little crow. That was quick and easy, right? <laughs> quick and easy. Okay, we're gonna whip this together and then we're gonna put it together in a cute little vignette. I have a little bit of an open area where the seams, where the edges didn't quite match up. So I can trim that off or I can kind of touch it up with a little bit of paint. Um, either way that works for you. I'm just gonna kind of trim it off a little bit. There we go. Okay, now he's gonna go right there on the front. Ooh, it keeps sticking to me. The front of our pumpkin. Is this not so cute? Hello, Miss Betty from Arkansas. How are you? I just spoke with you, I believe, if I have your name. If I don't, if I'm not remembering, um, if I'm not remembering correctly, <laughs> I spoke with you. We did a an audio call this week over in the Craft on the Clock group where we spoke to some of our followers. Oh, it was so much fun, and Miss Betty was in on it. She was in. She is from Fayetteville, Arkansas, home of the Razorbacks, is what she told us. And she has been in the Craft on the Clock group for several months, and she's loving it. If you guys are have not heard, <laughs> if you've not heard about the Craft on the Clock group, you guys got to check it out. Let me know, and I'll I'll send you the info where you can find us. We're just a Facebook group here on Facebook you can find us <laughs> all right so I'm using a piece of coffee grunged cheesecloth you guys that's all there is to it I just take a big bundle of cheesecloth soak it in the same grunging mixture I put it in a little in a pot and simmer it for a little bit then hang it out spread it outside let, let it air dry let it bake in the sun and it's glorious it's glorious you could use it for all kinds of projects and I'll show you a few in just a minute when we put this together in a little vignette all right so you're gonna tie this together so cute you guys so cute so cute and this keeps snagging my microphone is that not adorable I love it love it love it love it so we're gonna make a little hang tag real quick I have a little craft hang tag I did not grunge it. I should have grunged it before I started the live today. I didn't even bring my marker. So we are going to just crumple it. Got to crumple it up. Uh, hey, Miss Pam and Barb. How are you? Thank you all for hopping on here today. All right. So I'm just going to put, uh, let's put the word harvest on here. 
I wish I had my little fine tip Sharpie. That's what I typically use. And note to self, why did you forget to write this before you crumpled it? <laughs> okay. Whoa. Come on. It's not wanting to write. Okay. I'm just doing a little bit of doodling on here. Okay, there we go. Whoop, whoop, the lighting is whoop, whoop, harvest. Now, you know what I'm gonna do is gonna take some of that coffee stain that we still have left on our brush. I'm gonna just dapple it all over this little tag and then just we'll let it dry as it's hanging. I have also put a little grunged uh, safety pin on here as well. This will air dry, perfect, okay? A little uh, grunged safety pin, okay? We've just rested that up and a little string to make it look like it's attached. All we're gonna do now is take this little safety pin and attach this to our pumpkin. Now, let me look at it and see where we wanna hang this at. Um, okay, you're, well, tell me what you think. We could attach it right there. I think that's pretty cute. Or we could attach it up here at the top of the pumpkin. You guys let me know what you think. And we'll see if I can see comments too. <laughs> uh, let me swipe over and swipe back. Sometimes that brings them up. Sometimes sometimes. I'm kind of leaning towards up here at the top because we have a little bit of an open space. Um, good, Deborah, you're going to make that? Good. I'm so glad. Yeah, it's super easy, right? There's not much to it. Um, not a whole lot that you need. So I think I'm going to put it up here, middle and top. <laughs> I see middle, top, top. Okay. I think on the, oh my gosh, we're tied, you guys. Lower. Well, the good thing about this is it's a safety pin, so you can totally, totally adjust it. I'm looking at it from a distance. I think I'm going to go with the top for right now. I could totally change my mind, but you'll see why in just a second. I'm going to put it up here at the top for a minute uh, because how I'm going to put this in our little vignette it may kind of hide our little crow a little bit too much with the little vignette that we're going to do. Now, when, just fair warning, when you treat this material with, oh, I've got it so thick, you guys. I don't know if our little safety pin is going to go through here. That's crazy. All right, I might have to just hook it onto the moss and hopefully it stays for a minute. Um, <laughs> I'll work on that in a little bit. But when you treat this cloth and grunge it, use it, the, the little layering methods of color, it's going to get a, a little bit, uh, now our harvest word is a little upside down. Oh, well, we'll fix that later. It gets a toughness to it. It, it makes it feel, it's, you don't even nick, can't even hardly tell that it's material because it's stiff, okay? Now, are y'all ready to tie this together? I can't wait. Can't wait to show you this. Okay, so let me get my glue gun out of the way here because... We got to clear some space and I want you guys to see how I'm going to tie this together. So if you're like me, you might like to collect vintage scales. I have several. I would probably have a ton more if I had the space to put them, <laughs> but I don't. <laughs> so what we're going to do, we're going to take, well, let me clear this out of the way for just a minute. We're going to take our little pumpkin that we just finished today, our little pumpkin and crow set. And we're gonna take our little feed sack that we created yesterday, okay? And then we're gonna take our faux little bread loaves that we created last week, all right? Um, and then our little pie tarts. I did these last fall, these little dried uh, little tarts, little pantry cakes is actually what they're called, okay? taking a few of those all right you're seeing where we're going with this right and then I have a few other little items let me show you this strand of greenery let me clear my cords here hold on if I shake the the camera here I apologize all right 
So here, it's one of my favorite little kitchen scales. I kind of keep this tucked in my kitchen all the time. Just kind of decorate around it for the seasons because it's one of my perfect little pieces. I think it's just perfect little centerpiece to, to use in a little corner of, of decoration in my kitchen. So I have, let me show you what I have. You can find these, I think right now, maybe at Hobby Lobby. And a lot of times you can find them lots of different places. You don't have to use this exact thing, obviously. We all probably have some kind of tray of some sort that you can use. I just love the wood tones of this. I love it because it has the handles. I can pick it up and move it. If I put it on my table and I need to clear the table in a hurry, I pick it up and move it to the kitchen island or a corner cabinet, okay? Um, Barb, the feed sack print design came off of Etsy. If you're interested, let me know and I can share um, the info on where you can find that, okay? Um, I'm taking this little tray here. I'm saying this tray is probably 18 inches maybe, I don't know, so give or take a little bit. Let me move this paint bowl out of the way because we're gonna knock it over. <laughs> okay, taking this, then I have, now you guys bear with me here because I just kind of pulled this all apart. I have some, uh, just a layer of cheesecloth. It's just a strand of cheesecloth, which has moss all over it right now <laughs> because I'm kind of breaking down some of my summer decor and it had um, some moss attached to it. So all, all I do is just kind of drape it across and then I have, this is one of my favorite little greenery strands from Hobby Lobby. Um, and I use this in lots of different places around my home. You'll even see it right here behind me in this little hutch cabinet um, draped around the top. See that? I drape it from one corner to the other corner and let it dangle. I, that's the same little green restrand um, that I grab at Hobby Lobby. I love it and use it all over my house. It kind of has an earthy green to it, which makes it perfect. You can use it for fall and it still kind of blends in. and It's not too overly green. You know, it doesn't give you those spring or summer vibes necessarily. And then all I do is just I wrap that around in the circle. I've got it. This cheesecloth is getting kind of tangled to it, but you can just kind of rip that apart and it it's very forgiving. Okay, so I kind of drape that across the center. Um, nothing, you know, nothing too crazy, okay? Um, let me slide this over because I want to make sure you guys can see this the best way. And then I take just a little strand of this greenery. This is not the full strand. I think this is just a half of the piece of gar garland. Um, and then I just make a circle. Let's go this way. Let's put the ends in the back. It's big enough to go almost all the way around. Keep snagging on my cord. Okay. And make sure that kind of your little ends are kind of, you know, perky. They're not all smashed down. I like to kind of fuss with it a little bit to kind of fluff it. Okay. Then I'm going to take my, my, my little focal point here is my little scale. I'll put it sort of offset. This is going to be kind of weird for me to do on backwards. Um, all right. Might set this in first and then add your greenery, honestly. Okay. Set this over to the side. Okay. There we go. <laughs> you might have to swipe your comments over for a minute. Okay, good. I'll get you that, Miss Barb. All right. So then what we're going to do is we're going to take our finished. Whew, I'm hanging, snagging on everything. We're going to take our finished little pumpkin and crow set. And we're going to kind of just lean it up on the side right here. Okay. We're not finished. <laughs> Stay with me. We're not finished. I'm going to kind of scoot this towards the back of this uh, little tray. Okay. Now you can decorate all the way around, especially if this is going to be visible in the centerpiece or whatnot, you can totally decorate the back side as well. Um, I would also add a little string of twinkle lights all in my greenery. Just, I just like that. <laughs> I love adding, you know, a little bit of twinkle in that aspect. Okay. Then we're going to take our little feed sack that we made and we're going to put it right on top. Okay. Because I have to have different levels. Right now I'm kind of all medium to high. So now what I need to do is come in and fill in the bottom. Okay. We're going to use one of our little faux bread loaves. Okay. We're going to put it over here on this side. I'm going to kind of put it up on an angle. The good thing about that greenery is that you can kind of prop stuff up on it and kind of lean it up and it looks really cute. And if this is too small, I have a bigger one. I could prop it up right here as well. This is a little 
this is a small one. Um, and then I'm going to use my little, um, I do have a couple other little sprigs of greenery I can tuck in if you want to keep it green or you can just use, let's grab this. This is a, the only fall pick I have out right now, um, but you can use something like this and kind of tuck it in with your greenery, kind of twine all of that in together. Let some of your greenery kind of poke through the leaves so it kind of looks like it's all one piece, okay? Like so. All right, you're getting it? <laughs> and then I'm gonna take my little pantry, my little faux pantry cakes here, and let's see, I'm gonna kind of tuck these over right here. Tuck one right there and tuck the other. And those, those might kind of blend in a little too much, but kind of prop them up where you can see them, okay? And then I have a little battery operated um, candle. My batteries probably need to be replaced on this one, but it's on a timer, so it goes on and comes off all on its own, um, which is amazing, okay can't probably see it. it the lights are too bright but it is on it's just a little dim there you go it has a little bit of a flicker to it um, and I have just a little wooden candle holder let me show you what this looks like super easy you can find these at you know Hobby Lobby all day long just paint it black and have a little candle ring you don't have to have the candle ring if you have enough greenery and stuff down here you can totally disguise that little candle ring right down in the center here um, so I would probably tuck this like right down in here so that the glow from this little candle lights up not only my little crow and my little pumpkin but it'll also kind of you know shine a little bit of a glow on um, on our little uh, scale right there but is that not cute and if you have a string of twinkle lights add that to your your greenery around the base okay so let me pick this up without dropping it hopefully <laughs> okay now look at that is that not beautiful? I love it. So I would probably add um, another one of those fall picks that you see right there in the front and center that have the pumpkin and the gourds on that and the leaves. You guys, you guys. So I've given you one, two, three, four of these projects all in a week, this week that you can use to tie it all together. So, um, but, I mean, you can use this same idea with some things that you have. If you don't have a scale, maybe you have um, an old wooden bucket, or maybe you have a vintage pitcher, or you could use a crock. Kind of something about the same size and height would be perfect. I think also it would be cute to put in some little vintage kitchen pieces, a little rolling pin, a little sifter. If you need something on the back side, so let's turn it around on the on the back side, if it's going to be in a centerpiece, you could totally decorate the back as well. Um, you could print two sides on your feed sack so that it's double sided. Okay, that's an option as well. We only made it two, uh, one sided, but you could print another one on the back so that it's visible from front to back. If you want to create it for the seasons, excuse me, have a fall print on this side have a, a Christmas or winter print on this side so that it's totally reversible. You have two projects in one, there you go. So on the back side, all I would do is just add another uh, sprig, another spray, another fall pick, okay, honestly. And then just kind of tuck in some more greenery just for some fillers. I tell you what I do like. Let me show you this while I'm thinking about it. And it just made me think about it. Um, I don't have all my fall florals unpacked yet. They're still in storage. I'm not quite ready to decorate for fall yet. <laughs> Although I might be really soon, sooner than I think. So what I take is some just some little sprigs. Now these are these probably aren't necessarily fall colored. <laughs> you can get away with it if you tie it in in just the right way. Um, let me turn, tilt this around this way. But do you see right here, this little sprig was something that I just kind of tucked in there, but it kind of helps feather out the display. Let me tilt that back a little bit so that it kind of looks like it just blends all natural down to the bottom. I, we have multiple layers, which is what I love. We have repeating colors, multiple layers, and always add greenery, <laughs> greenery and light. So those are the four elements I always like to keep in mind when I'm doing like a tiered tray or like a display, a centerpiece, anything like that. Greenery is a must. Repeating colors in your theme 
and multiple levels with a little bit of light. Okay, we have our light with the candle. We would add twinkle lights at the bottom. We have repeating colors of the creams, the blacks, the browns. Um, what else? Repeating colors with the greens um, and the oranges. We have some orange here. We have a little bit of an orange actually in this little candlestick, which is not showing up real bright on your screen. And then a little bit of orange repeating in the pumpkins at the bottom. Now, I like to stick a few little sprigs in off the side because it kind of helps soften the edges a little bit. So if you tuck this in, it just is an extra little touch that add, makes it look a little bit more professional, honestly. You can tuck those in and see how that just kind of gives a little soft edge right there? Just makes it look more natural, okay? So I would do the same thing over here. See where I kind of have a little bare spot right here? Take this little sprigs stick it in there and see how we've already added a little bit of inch let me tilt this around this way there you can see that we've kind of filled in the gaps right there a little bit and if you have a little hole or something right there you could also tuck it in somewhere right there and give just a little bit of greenery okay um, wherever you kind of see a little empty spot um, where you can kind of see through it fill it in with a few little picks and you'll see it really just kind of softens the look a little bit there you go. That's probably a little too tall for right there. I do want my scale to be seen, so I don't want to tuck anything right in front of it. I would probably just tuck another one in right there. And I love how those kind of just carry over. So, what do you think? What do you think? Isn't it beautiful? But, and it's not like screaming fall. It's not really like, I mean, it is fall. Don't get me wrong, but it's not like your super bright bright oranges it's very muted and earth tone you know friendly <laughs> right so hopefully we've get, given you lots of inspiration today and uh, during the last week or so when we've created all these projects so the projects that I bring to you are hopefully things that I hope that you can kind of use together and they actually have a purpose other than you just creating it and stuffing it in a corner right but all of these pieces would be so cute if you need a, a housewarming gift or a hostess gift um, or just because gift if you like making things these are perfect items that you can make and sell you can make multiples of very easily so yeah <laughs> this was fun today right if you love this today make sure you let me know okay press that heart button push that little button that spreads us all out and be sure to let me know down in the comments below if you love this thing i've got more things coming for you i can't wait can't wait can't wait this is one of my favorite seasons fall and christmas <laughs> i shouldn't say season fall is a season but christmas isn't necessarily season but i love decorating for this time of year and so it just gets me all excited and giddy you guys so i love it i hope that you guys have enjoyed it today lots of layers and this is just beautiful for an island centerpiece or tuck it in, the, if you have one of those empty, awkward corners on your kitchen counters, tuck it in a little corner, you have a soft little glow. <gasps> love it, love it. All right, stay tuned. Our next creator is coming up live in two minutes over in the Craft on the Clock group here on Facebook. If you're watching this on uh, YouTube, check us out on Facebook as well, or if you're watching, check us out on YouTube occasionally as well. All right, I will stay, stay tuned for the next creator, and I will talk to you soon. Have a great weekend. And thanks for being here today. And I will see you guys next week. I don't know what day, but stay tuned. I'll always create an event so you'll find out and you can uh, make sure you can sign up for reminders. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye.